live for the arts. I work for Asian New York. Oh, you do? Amazing. So it's so funny. So Elliot Mathias, do you yes. work with him at all? Yes, we work together. Oh, that's so wonderful. I'd love to talk to you afterwards. Okay. I'm like to totally to interested in New York City. Okay, good. Because we're just starting. I'm sure, I don't know if Elliot's told you, but like we're just starting. We're like a core group of five. And but I'd love to I, I really would, how we can. I would love to. I mean, okay. really, I'm, being, I'm being totally serious. No, like, I'm totally committed. <laughs> I, I, I live right next to Rabbi Berg. I and so. You right away. I was like, okay, yeah. you must be. I would, no, I would love anything you guys okay. need. I mean, Thank I'm you. like so committed to Aish. I love it. I, Rabbi Berg is one of neighbor, you uh, know, okay. so nice. literally. And I mean, I'm so happy you just introduced yourself. Thank you. Good. Because we've been working for Aish in London. Oh, amazing. We were there for 20 years, and now we've just moved here. Oh, congratulations. Where are you living? Thank you. The Lower East Side. Oh, my God. And it's just, we've come from, I mean, the last 20 years, Aish in, in the UK has, like, grown. Whatever. Oh, I'm so it's excited. Huge. And now we're here, and it's like all starting new. And right. It's, like, yeah. so. it's really, I mean, it's so funny. So from a leadership perspective, and as you think about things, like I'm not like the fundraiser person. I'm like more the leadership person. So you know, I would love to so, help you well, think about things. You. Okay, that'd be great. Totally committed. <laughs> love it. Love it. Oh, I'm so excited. When did you go So the first, Jay Inspire Queens. We'd like to bring up Connor Merrick. Come on up here. Connor, where are you? Okay. Now you guys, we're going to start out with a bang. We're starting out with a bang over here. Okay. Can I get Jay Inspire Queens? Please raise your hands. Jay Inspire Queens look all over the place. Unbelievable. They're everywhere. Here you go. Uh, and um, so we came up with this Torah and tequila. 
tequila. Uh, they love tequila. I actually like it now too myself. Um, and um, it's really, it's been incredible. We, we learn and we have fun. And we actually just had one last week. Uh, and it's really incredible. So really that's, that's, that's been, it's really also about having fun and learning. It's really content, which is really, uh, has been, you know, it's, everybody wants it and, they, and it's really uh, great. Um, I think something that's unique about Queens, I mean, I don't know, I think maybe maybe it would be great, you know, I don't know if everybody has this or not, but we have a lot of unity. Um, we're all friends. Uh, we do things not just as part of J Inspire or JWRP, we do things together. We're really friends with each other. And I think that that's very helpful uh, in terms of, you know, planning and doing, and we're kind of all on the same page. Uh, and it really is very helpful. And not only do we have unity with our city leaders between each other, but also with our participants. Uh, we really keep a very close bond with them uh, and connection with them. And uh, it's really, we feel like we're really sisters. Um, we call ourselves soul sisters. Uh, we really are soul sisters and uh, we feel really, really, really close to each other. Very, very blessed to uh, have, uh, have to go on this ride. Really incredible. Thank you so much. I'd like to call up the, uh, they, they want to make this a state, Long Island. Long <laughs> Island, New York, I grew up there. So who, who's coming to speak for Long Island? Is she getting dressed? Uh, is she getting? Okay, come, come. Hurry, you only have, only have two and a half minutes left. Hurry, hurry. Thank you so much. That was 
always creative. Always amazing.
the next group where we took seven ladies and we've done, we're coming up to our ninth trip now. And we have amazing city leaders and um, we're gonna have Martha and Ed to share a little bit about what we do. Um, I just wanna acknowledge who's here. We came with almost 20 people today. And our participants, not just our leaders are here, which, what's very special to us is our participants wanted to come and we have very special women here. I'll name our participants first. kids before school, 
Um, and then there's, we do paint night cooking. We always, we have guest speakers. We do the whiskey and wisdom with the, that the men do. And then we've taken second level trips, some with Jay Inspire and then some on our own that uh, were put together by Esther Friedman and Andrea Portal, which was, were very successful last year. Um, and then social programs, which we like to have the women get, like to plan. Like, so we have it structured in a way that, um, so we'll do the, the learning programs and then, there aren't enough of us to make every you know like to make everything happen. So we like to have the women to um, to actually organize the, the social events, which we hope to. And our biggest fundraiser. Right. Oh, thank you. Oh, and our biggest fundraiser is the challah bake, which um, Debbie Roslovsky um, puts together with and Michelle, and Michelle, and with the second year that we've taken it over, and um, we've had 850 participants on both years. Thank God. It was we Oh, oh, and our mega reunion, which we have, Michelle always puts together, which we're about to do in March. March. Yeah. I think I smell money, so whenever I hear Colibate that makes money, it might be something people want to pick their brain on. It's a great, great thing. Okay, we want to bring up James from Manhattan. None of this would happen without Cheryl, so I just want to thank you. But really, I want to thank everyone here because um, Cheryl um, really formed this group and made Jay Inspire Manhattan into what it is. We are now at six city leaders. So myself and Ad Levy, Sarah Eisenstein is here. Um, we have three more, Mariam Schwebel and Alana Prager and Hannah Ringel. And so that's already big for us. Um, I also really want to thank Rebbe Sampson and Rebbe Barnett who believed in us and met with us several years ago and really said, give it a go and really take this to the next level. It's now growing exponentially and we're trying to really keep up with all the programming and follow up as best as we can. And we are learning from everybody here. So there isn't a program that we do that we don't ask <coughs> one of you for advice. And um, we're just getting that much more successful. I've actually taken three trips. Cheryl's done many more. Um, Sarah Eisenstein one. Um, and we're just bringing on new city leaders. Um, I think the biggest challenge for us, and I've been listening to the other groups, Brooklyn was interesting to me because of the Jewish community there has different challenges than the Jewish community in Manhattan. So one thing just to keep in mind as we develop programming, Manhattan is very Jewish. But a lot of the women that come to us, and ourselves included, we're very disconnected from each other. It's a large space. We're the only group right now that is taking JWRP trips. We have a real opportunity here, and people want community. Um, this isn't about religious, not religious, being religious. People want community, mostly for their children, if not for themselves. Their children are in schools that are just very, very, very diverse, which is wonderful but they don't know how to have their children be strong in who they are. There are a lot of challenges in this city. There's a growing anti-Semitism or whatever, and they're very concerned about <coughs> colleges. So we have a real opportunity here. So every time we put a program together, we try to keep it in mind and try to bring it to the children and try to get down to that level. So we're bringing the husbands on board, and I'm not sure who suggested it, but we're all bringing our husbands on board. So we had a Friday night meal just uh, two nights ago. Our husbands were there interacting with the, with the other husbands, with the participants. We had our children there interacting with the children. So it's a real project inspired kind of effort where we're all in it together and it's growing and we're very successful, we think. Everybody's successful and bring different pieces to the, uh, to, the, to the recipe. Just want to just stress the husbands. I just got back a few months ago from a men's trip, a JWRP trip, and we have three or four great guys from Manhattan and a, and a great leader who's named Felden, he's in the, the community of Manhattan, but he's also from, from Bergen, from, from Teaneck, so it's really a great crossover, so don't forget those men. They're, they're worth something, okay? <laughs> but leave them behind. Okay, now, we'd like to uh, introduce, a, it's an unofficial James Bond brand. It's not official, but we're like very, very close friends. So it's Mary Pleader. Started, uh, started as a lay person, you know, not a religious lay person, this amazing group, the door to door, and we love her, and she's really an honorary member of our organization. So please, Mary, come up and say some words. Where's I don't know these. 
Central Jersey. Where are you from, Mary? Please say your Okay. So I live in Montgomery, New Jersey, Belly, New Jersey. So to be honest, I grew up, I'm secular, and I grew up um, always wanting more out of my religion. And um, in 2012, I went on my first JWRP trip, but I lived in this community. Honestly, the further west you go out of New York, the farther the synagogues are, and the more difficult it is to be Jewish. And um, I always felt this lack of community. And there is a lack of Jewish community where I live. And I live very close to Princeton. I live close to Bridgewater. I, I, I call this area Central New Jersey. Um, so I went on my trip in 2012. I turned 50. I had applied to go to uh, school. I was ready to go back for my law degree. And um, all set to go. And I went in June. And um, I was so inspired by my trip. And I came back and I, I just felt this sense of Jewish community when I went on the trip and just, it had really changed my life. And I came back and I said to my husband, you know, this changed my life so much and this is the lack of, this feeling of community is what we really need in our area. And I got to go out of Livingston, New Jersey, which was outside the 30 mile radius and I got to go as an exception. So I felt like I wanted to bring this sense of community and start an organization. So I started the organization in my area, and to date, we've taken five trips. Um, and it's been really, it's been very So the nice thing that we've done is, because I'm not orthodox, I've crossed over into different communities where I have uh, religious people come and teach in my homes, and it's inspired women in my homes, we have uh, bi-weekly learning, and um, men come to the learning sessions as well, and um, we've really inspired community. I mean, we've got crossing over into communities. We're having, um, we had people come to the J Inspire Body and Soul Retreat. That inspired us so much. We're doing our own Shabbaton um, in March. And we have over 45 people now signed up for that. So um, the women have really become a sisterhood. We had the first um, Princeton holiday where we had close to 300 people come. So this is an area where when I first tried to do the first um, trip, we couldn't even get 10 people signed up. It was so challenging. If you tried to pay them to go, they wouldn't go. <laughs> so um, the first trip sold itself, and then after that, it, we, were, we were flying. So um, it, it's taken off, it's great. I appreciate all the help you've given us and um, it should just continue. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's pretty amazing to have that Chabotone affect you and have another one, that's a great, great idea. So before we get to the last group that we have for today, I wanna to just make a shout out to a few other groups that either are late or whatever. So Jane Spire is, is um, really Rabbi Sampson spearheaded this taking the, this idea that you guys have developed in New York, trying to take it all over the country. Arizona was the first, James Bar Arizona, at, at New York, based on your work. Then we went recently to Cincinnati, and there's a group from Cincinnati, they're delayed on the airplane, but they're, they're gonna be here, we wanna do a shout out to Cincinnati, and we'll meet them later. We've also recently gone to Baltimore, to try to bring this concept, I was part of James Bar in Baltimore, we have some, uh, Ladies here, I'm gonna have them speak in a, in a moment. I also wanted to do a shout out. Is Liat Mayerfield here yet? Yeah, she's not yet, but is she here from New York? Oh, yeah, there's Liat. So H New York, which this was the first center a long time ago, but this beautiful H New York, and they have a new new uh, life with the Mayerfields, and they're down in uh, Lower Manhattan, in, in, in um, Lower East Side and Williamsburg. They're starting a double branch, they're very talented, they want to hear they want to partner with us, so we never turn partners away, right? So we want you to announce this great idea to their, you know, their brain. And we want to also introduce Debbie Garfunkel from Jersey Shore. Is Debbie here? Snowed in. Snowed in. A lot of snow in the Jersey Shore? Snowed in. Really? Well, I thought that was a joke. Okay. So anyway, that's no joke. So we're going to conclude. We're right on time. Thank God as well. And we're going to bring up from uh, Baltimore. Tomorrow, Livingstone and Sydney Copley. So let's see a little bit. Oh, and Rock, I'm sorry. And then Rock is next. Good. No, please. Let's have, let's have Baltimore because they're on their up out of their seats and then we'll conclude with Rock. Hi, I 
I teach first grade, so if you could all like doodle on your table and chew your pencils and call out and ask to go to the bathroom at the most integral you know, point, that would make me feel much more comfortable being up here. Um, to be Gottlieb from Baltimore, I recently was asked to um, get involved and it's really been incredible. There started, a, you know, Baltimore is a real community. There's just a sense of community always and connectivity that's unusual. Um, and there's been, you know, other things going on to connect and Project Inspire came in to hook up with Eitz Chaya, which is an organization we have there. And together there's just this energy and this change that even in a short time is just really felt by everyone. And it started with a beautiful Shabbos that was what, like 17 shuls, which is just amazing. We're involved in a Shabbos and People from literally every single part of the city were involved. Even my 17-year-old went and just came home and was like, what can I do? I want to be part of this. Um, so that was really cool. There was a Friday night event, Shabbos day event, Matzah Shabbos event, and the, the energy was like suddenly all over the city and everyone was talking about Project Inspire, J Inspire. It was very amazing. Um, and then we just recently had, you'll talk about the learning programs, and um, there's also been the, another, what am I forgetting? The training for a bunch of people who came, which was also just so amazing, and the energy again. And there's all this talk, and we're just so excited to really build up to what all of you are doing, which is just like humbling to be up here and to be talking when you guys have been doing so much and dedicating. Um, so much time. I was thinking that my daughter said to me the other day I was complaining about a parking spot, which barely happens in Baltimore, just by the way. And I was like, oh, I can't believe I can't find a parking spot. She said, mommy, don't complain. Hashem planned this for you. And don't think because he doesn't like you. It's because he loves you. I don't know why you need this. She's six. And I was like, I do, this is not me. This was not my raising her. This is from her teacher who inspired her, and simultaneous to that, this Project Inspire opportunity came my way, and I was thinking, you know what, I want to be inspired. Like my six-year-old, she gets to connect every day with fellow students and amazing teachers, and I want to be inspired the same way that when I don't have a parking space, I can say, ah, oh, Hashem, you love me. <laughs> so I'm very excited to be part of this, and I hope that I'll be able to accomplish even half of what you've all accomplished. <laughs> So if you could also do it all on the tables and ask to go to the bathroom and put the first graders, I think we'll be on par, right? Um, I actually just moved to Baltimore from Chicago where I had run, I was a city leader on two JWRP trips and ran women's follow-up programming there. Um, I'm new to Baltimore where I work for a time, so I've been involved in Jewish outreach and education for over a decade. I also am a lecturer for Mikva USA, so I talk about, you know, marriage and Mikva and all of that um, for different communities of different levels of affiliation. So I love everything you guys are doing and I'm so inspired because for most of my career it's been me, my husband, and our staff doing Jewish outreach and education. So when Project Inspire came to Baltimore, and like Tiffany said, we were in 17 shuls, all of our staff was MC in different parts of the weekend. I was at an Oneg, my husband was at an Oneg, our other staff were at Onegs, like all over the city. And they, each place was packed and on fire. It was really amazing to see the energy and the interest from the community. Um, soon after the Project Inspire weekend, we launched a Wine and Wisdom program, which is a one-on-one, -on -one, um, not a one-on-one, -on -one, it's like a Partners in Torah style where people come to learn and they're matched up with mentors. We did it at a lovely home. We had, were the refreshments really nice? Yeah, I made them. They were really nice, right? <laughs> so we had, it was a really nice evening with nice wine and, you know, some, like half an hour of socializing and then about 50 minutes of learning, everybody matched up with a pair, the pairs worked out really well. Thank you, Miriam Leigh, who was one of our mentors also. Um, and it was beautiful, there was great energy, I had a lot of interest from mentors and mentees to come to the program. We're gonna be doing it once a month, so it's not too heavy of a commitment, but just also exciting. Um, and I already have a bunch of people signed up for our next one, so we're excited, and we're looking forward to uh, that, learning and growing from all of you. So thanks, Mark. Okay, so I'd like to, to call up uh, Jay Inspire Rockland. Thank you, Thank you. Hi, I'm Jay Inspire Rockland. I have to go quick, I'm so happy about that. Um, I don't want to be here by myself. I'm Jenny Lazar from Lindsay, and so I'm calling on my 
idea for a garden party. Um, I happened to have um, a nice size house with a big backyard and so we said we'll charge $18. And I knew through word of mouth in Great Neck we would have a strong response and we did. We had probably close to 300 people because the price was so low and uh, it really was standing room only. A beautiful event. We raised a lot of money. It was very exciting. And so the following year, which was this past summer, we had already a good word of mouth and then we raised the ticket price to $75. <laughs> and we still got how many people? We still got close to maybe 150 people, 200, 200 people. So uh, the appeal was, and the second event was very upscale. We had catered food from Kolbe, who was wonderful. If anyone knows Kolbe catering locally, the owners, uh, Kolbe, is glad coach. I'm sorry? The event, the garden part, the first event, all the city leaders brought their own food, and we got a lot of food donations. It was a lot of work. 
It took a lot of asking. That's why uh, we got. She asked what attracted them to come. Okay, I have to say, what I, probably I attracted them is probably, uh, you know, Great Net is a very tight knit Jewish community, uh, and probably a little bit of curiosity to see my house and find out about the group. And we chose an. <laughs> yes, but wait, no, 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 both events, what we did was we chose an amazing honoree. The first event, we chose Kathy Esarzadeh, who is the New York um, representative for Kifar Yeladim David, an orphanage in Israel. And because we, I, I selected her very strategically, I knew she would bring a lot of people, and she did. And a lot of people wanted to hear her speak, and she gave an amazing uh, speak, uh, speech. The second year, with a higher ticket price, we chose Ilona Trokel, who's a wonderful, very popular, beloved woman in Great Neck. She happens to be Russian, but in every group, uh, just people adore her and she's beautiful. She also attracted a huge crowd, despite the ticket price. And as I said, we worked with Kolbe. They were very good, uh, gave us a lot for our money. We had a beautiful event. Music. Yeah, music. Uh, yeah, we had, DJ, yeah, we had dancing, yeah. DJ, we had alcohol, we had... Um, oh. Package party. Package party, we had auctions, we had beautiful raffle gifts. So it was still a lot of work, but because we used the caterer, it was you know it wasn't it wasn't as much work. So I think that just in terms of best practices, I would recommend a planning an event with an amazing honoree that is going to be a draw, because obviously that's a very big part of it. We didn't have sponsors. No, I, I would say Colbe was probably could be considered a sponsor because they gave us a lot for the what we got. We had a live grill with kebab and it was like a bar mitzvah. No, there was no paying to the speaker. The only expense was really the caterer, um, and it was um, we got donations for all the raffle gifts. We had a Chinese auction. We had a couple of people that offer that donated a trip to Israel and some very lavish, beautiful gifts. Um, but it really was starting with the honoree and the location. My house, obviously, there was no charge, and making it a fun party with music and dancing and. And it was a ladies' event, and it was very popular, very well received. I'm a little worried about who's going to show up next year. We're going to have to pick another great honoree. And I, I think it was just a great uh, formula that unified our chapter, really had the involvement of a lot of people in planning it. And the honorees were very, very pleased. Uh, it, it was a beautiful event in their honor, and they deserve to be honored. Uh, Alona also is a woman in Great Neck who's just one of those people that helps everyone, does a tremendous amount of that said for all different types of groups, not just her own synagogue. So choosing a great honoree, picking a nice house or location, and, and, and really putting in some muscle to developing word of mouth, getting people to make phone calls. We also used PayPal, which I think was very helpful to collect. And we advertised a lot. And we advertised a lot on Facebook, on social media. But um, it was an organized event. Uh, and you can imagine having that many people show up. It can be a little chaotic, but because we had it well organized, um, it was a successful event, and I look forward to doing it again ah. next year. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot came out as that presentation unfolding, a lot of details. Can I ask you to just remember those, John, all the, a lot of details, yes, honorees, uh, raffles, China, there's a lot of, lot of details that you weren't, can you jot them down and we'll get them out to everybody because it's a great sure. program and a great idea. Sure. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And again, we'll, we'll be able to talk to them more over lunch and have more details and we'll get you a, kind of an outline of that program with, with, uh, that you could replicate if you so choose. So now I'd like to call upon Robin Meyerson from uh, Arizona. You know Robin already? And Robin has done a lot of fundraising and different kinds of fundraising, not necessarily event fundraising, other kinds of fundraising. We wanted to give her, give you that ability to give it, broaden the perspective a little bit. Okay, so um, I wasn't born a fundraiser, and a lot of times people can be very, very scared um, to fundraise and ask for money. But I'm just going to share just very personal experiences, is that I'm just passionate about sharing um, our Jewish heritage with our other Jewish sisters and brothers. And so when I share what we're doing and what our mission is to build this grassroots movement, we all know wealthy people in our community, and when I share that passion, you just listen for the cues a little bit, and people will say, well, I want to get involved with that. Or someone will say, well, what would you do? Or how, how are you doing it? And I listen for the cues, and I say something like, gosh, if I had $100,000, I would do blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the next thing I know is I get a check for $5,000. So, I mean, 
I'm not saying I know what I'm doing, but I just, I just, I just, I just, I just kind of try, and I just trust that. I mean, if if Hashem is going to give it, then it's going to happen. And I, and I'm at first I was really scared to do it, um, but then the more it happened, I thought, okay, I'm just going to ask. So um, that's kind of it has to start with a relationship. I'm going to say it a thousand times: relationship, relationship, relationship. You can't go up to someone and just say, you know, give me money. You have to, you have to really know the person and get, you know, be friends. You just have to trust and, you know, have a relationship with that person. So it, ha it can be scary, but when you're passionate about it, it just comes naturally. So some of the nitty gritties, though, of things that we actually do. Um, in Arizona is we have applied for some grants through the Federation and that can seem very tedious you know they have their paperwork and everything but just do it because um, we did one grant and um, we got uh, let's see one grant gave us 2500 another grant gave us a thousand dollars I just applied for another grant and we're twelve thousand five hundred dollars so I mean it seems like it's a, a lot of tedious work but the money is coming in what do you say in the grants that make um, well, I, they, they have very specific guidelines, like what's your mission, what's your vision, how are you going to track what you're doing, how many people are going to get to your event, they want to see your budget, so you have to be organized with that. Say, could we use that same um, model for other organizations, and how do you know which places to go? So you can use the model that I've used, but you have to answer their direct questions that they're asking for. So. Are you using the new J Inspire? Because I'm just wondering, can we as J Inspire Manhattan apply for a separate grant? Or do we have, is it, like are you doing it through J Inspire? I think, I mean, we could look into that about grant okay. care. I, mean, I think that some people, I might probably answer would be probably Yesh Yesh. Sometimes it would be probably J Manhattan if you have a funding source of the Federation that gives to Manhattan only things. Other times it could be part of a larger grant. So that's a good thing for us to look into. And we're willing, we're very happy to do that. Um, another, another thing, there's a very tactical thing that we do is, you all have heard of Giving Tuesday, it's a net nationwide thing, so we, we have a list, thank God, of 2,000 people on our list, so we sent out an email, it's Giving Tuesday, here's a link, donate, um, at the end of the year, December 31st, the, you know, the calendar year, it's the end of the year, can you give us some sadaka? And it's a, just a quick email, but it, it yielded um, a few thousand dollars. So, I mean, that was amazing. Um, let's see, another thing is when you do the events, we did this for our holiday week, and this is the last thing I'm going to end with, is that we did a VIP uh, section at our holiday week where you, could, we could, you, where you could meet the celebrity that came, and we charged $350 just to meet her, so uh, Jamie Geller for our holiday week. And so I was like, thrilled when, you know, six, seven people came to the little VIP and all I had to do was buy some sushi and, um, <laughs> and they met her and we got 350 times seven people. So that was super cool. So um, you all know wealthy people in your community. Don't be afraid. Just be passionate, just like you are in this room. Just smile and say how much you love what you're doing and, and don't be afraid. Then that's, that's the best advice I can give you. Yes? Um, I mean, the way you the, can... The question was, does she have a 501c3 nonprofit status? In, in Arizona, yes, we did set up, we did set up that way, um, because legitimately, if you want to give the donations and the tax write-off, yes, absolutely. But we have, a, obviously, we have a 501c3 yeah. that is, is that you could work Inspire, yeah. yeah. Right. Now, just... Hi, I'm really just going to introduce Rani Moser, our city leader, together with our wonderful Jenny Kagan, trip participant, and they'll really bring it to life. But what we really try to do in Brooklyn is bring in um, our fellow community women, and men too, um, um, to be um, people to share with the new sisters that we met, to be learning partners, to be uh, friends, and really beautiful relationships develop. And we run after it, meaning if we, you know, we, we choose people you know, personally that we know, and we, we keep um, suggesting we keep after them to make sure that the matches actually happen, take off the ground because we know everybody's busy, but um, that's really one of the things that we really work very hard on and we're just um, seeing beautiful relationships develop and they will share with you. Um, 
what happened? Who's first? Um, <laughs> who's first? That's what Jen, okay. Jen is first. Okay. Well, uh, Shulamit asked me to prepare a speech, and I have to do like four days, and I have to write down notes. And you know, four <laughs> I locked myself I in the bedroom last night trying to figure out <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, um, so uh, I'm here with the Brooklyn group. My name is Jenny Kagan. I um, was the my first and the only the first only trip to Israel was in uh, April May, May of last year. So I'm very green, very new, um, and. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, there are many things that I learned. One of the things that I learned from this trip is that it's actually possible to make friends in your 40s, when you're in your 40s. <laughs> the last time I made friends was like 20 years ago when I came to America. Uh, and now I have like so many friends who actually listen to me and, and support me and it's incredible. Like, like suddenly like 30 friends, that's crazy. <laughs> um, okay, I was completely um, ignorant before. Uh, religion never entered my vocabulary. Um, I first heard the word Hashem from my city leaders. I didn't know what it meant. I never prayed. I've never met Orthodox people until Shulamit asked me to come for an interview. Okay, so, um, and since then, of course, I learned a lot, and when I'm trying to figure out what I learned, how much, I have this picture in my mind. Uh, I've been reading a book, A Gateway to Judaism by Rabbi Mordechai Becher, a wonderful book. She reads more than anybody in this room. I'm just going to say, like in Kola. <laughs> okay, so there is this chart. There is this chart in the book, a pie chart. Uh, I'm not going to draw it because it's very simple and it's not scientifically approved. So the chart stays like that. There is like a, a little sliver of 2%. And it says what we know, and then there is a 10% that says what we don't know, and then there is an 88% of the rest that says what we don't know that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so my, all of my learning from me at, up until today has been kind of touching that sphere of human knowledge, the things that I've never knew were available to me and existed. And it's not that I jumped off the plane and started lighting Shabbat candles, it didn't happen. So because the change doesn't happen in eight days uh, that we spent in Israel. However, it is with the, with the warm and respecting guidance from my learning partner, Heidi Moser, that my change actually, <laughs> that, that I started to change. Um, it's not easy for me. I'm not surrounded, like I told to my friends at the table, I'm not surrounded by a close-knit Jewish community. My family is not very supportive of my endeavors. They're warming up, but it takes me a while to melt their eyes. Um, they barely let me out here today. <laughs> like, you're leaving the family again? I'm, like, I'm not leaving, I'm staying with you. <laughs> but um, with our almost daily text messages to each other and with our weekly talks, and we communicate weekly on the phone, just like I you know, signed up, uh, but it is no longer an obligation for me. I feel that it's a necessity, you know? I, I really need this. I see. <laughs> um, so all of the, of the books and all of the, um, the lectures that I heard, the books that I read, the, the Irish newsletters that I'm subscribed to, all of the stuff, um, it has been just, it didn't happen, like I said, straight away, but with Hani's support, who has been so patient and so um, tolerant and just so allowing me and, and not judging me. And we met with Hani back in Israel. Like we hit it off from the start. We, she was our my city leader also, and it was so easy to talk to her. So when, when Shulamit picked Hani and me to be together, I, I'm not even, I was not even surprised. Mm. I was like, it was it just seemed so natural. So now we, we talk very often, and I know her family, and she knows mine. And um, I just wanted to just give you one more picture. Uh, 36 weeks ago, I bought a box of Shabbat candles. <laughs> and I texted a picture of the box to Hani, and I said, I'm optimistic. <laughs> Guess what? I'm opening up the second box next week. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I just want to 
say two things, because I only have two minutes. When I met Jenny <laughs> in 20 seconds, okay. I met Jenny in Israel, and this is where this was her comment. You know, we had one last day, and we had you don't have a lot of free trip time on the trip, so we only had like uh, two hours free on the last day. So we went to the Gula to go shopping for our kids, and I came back, and we met all the people, and I asked her what she did, and she's like, honey, I have one day to say goodbye to the wall. What do you think I did? I went back to the wall. That's like what us city leaders get out of this. I think probably way more than even they get is this insane ability to meet people who, whose lives were very fine before this. Nobody, they weren't lacking anything, and this, this inner inspiration, I think, inspires us. So. That's um, hi, I'm Shippy Edelman, and this is Rifki Roserwald, and Tibet, together with Sapora um, Sachs um, and and Sapikhala. Sorry. And Esti. Well, everyone knows Esti. <laughs> and, and a lot of other women who aren't here, a lot right. of people say, is it just us three? There's a lot of women from our community who get involved. They go on the trips, and then it seems in our group, I don't know about, they stay very involved with their trip, I, rather than with, I don't know how many people we've brought, maybe 200, 300, I don't know. They stay involved with their group. I think that's because we're gigantic, and we're... We're, we bit off something gigantic. We bit, bit off the whole Long Island, and the women yeah. around us, most of them are, not most of them, but a good percentage are affiliated, so even though we try to inspire them, they inspire us, we inspire them, so we're always, um, um, I guess, experiencing the challenge of we have a giant geographic area, and so that actually inspired what we, what right. we do. Okay. So, so what we, we realized is we used to do a lot of stuff in our homes, and people did come, but it was more and more challenging. And we said, look, if we start doing it in their communities and their temples and letting them run it, it will be even more successful because they can get their communities and past participants and future participants. And that's what we started to do. So a lot of our women will take on running an event. Also, we make the events in their homes and so they get both their friends and their and, and participants involved. Um, so that's been a big, a big um, change for us. And we literally go in someone's SUV, we climb in a bunch of women from our neighborhood, and we pick each other up, and if there are participants in our neighborhood the also. Class. What? The traveling Parsha class. Yeah. So we're, we're really, we, we bring the Parsha out to them, we bring events out to them, but they also create events for us. And we've done a lot of creative events. They were talking about drinking events. We did McGill and Mojitos. Any liquor that'll get people to come to anything, we go for it. Zumba. We did Zumba and Hamantash making. We've done a lot of creative stuff over the years. The other thing, just in terms of, so that's how we've gotten more and more people involved. One other quick thing is everybody's talking about fundraisers, and we're always interested in hearing what we do, and you have to know your community. Right. So our community um, does not have um, a big core group of the secular women, and I'm not sure that anyone that we've met, and we're still hoping to meet who has a community that they affect um, dramatically, even though we've done like a nutrition and um, prayer and, and a couple's eat, pray, night, love, eat, eat, pray, pray love, love, and we've done that in a nutritionist's house, and all of her friends came. But so what we do is we do a pre-Purim bake sale because in our neighborhood bake sales go over yeah. and that's our big fundraiser and we get tons of women cooking and tons of women buying and we make, uh, you know, that's really one of our biggest events in terms of being able to fund the trips. Right. So just in terms of another creative thing, if that works in your neighborhood, great. If not, not. And we have, Spora Sachs is very talented. She sets it up so beautifully and then they post it that people just want to come see because it could be the worst looking home and by the time she finishes with it, the table is amazing. So and we, want to, we want to just thank all our participants who came today. Also, um, and we do a Friday night reunion after every trip where we bring in the husbands, the wives, the families, the mothers, the fathers, the cousins, the uncles, anyone who's willing to come and that's always very inspirational. Good. Beautiful. Do you have a question? Sure. Yeah. Do you only have people that you know that the conscious you could 
trust or do the Yeah, family. because yes. our neighborhood is completely. Uh, are you all, you say just. But the, the women do. Actually, we've had, had some women who come to bake in our homes who wanted to participate. We, we've we had them come to our home and they bake in our kitchens. Yes. It also says who baked it, so we do have a preference. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want to call Robin Meyerson up again because she's also, since she hasn't gone on the trips, it gave her the challenge of, of, of not, of, one of the things about going on the trips is you have women coming, hopefully, God willing, to, that want to go, so you have a market. So she's participated in, a, in an area where there was no market, she had to create it. Now I know why she wants to go on the trip so badly, but she has some ideas that she could share with us who do have the good fortune of having some women, but not enough women. So Robin, why don't you come up and short and sweet. <coughs> So this is called building a funnel. So a funnel, what is a funnel? It's a group of people who um, want to participate in the activities that you're doing. And as Donna was saying, is what is our mission? What is our purpose? And our purpose is to build a grassroots movement of mutual inspiration of men and women learning and growing together and traveling to Israel together. So how do we measure that we're actually building a funnel? So. There's something in business called key performance indicators. Now, that can sound like, like a very scary term, but it basically is just measuring who's in your funnel. So it, the nitty gritty of it is taking a spreadsheet and saying, how many people in my community are actually hosting? How many people are actually were coaches at the Holovig? How many people are on my email list? Dividing it out, how many people went on the trips, how many people are mentors, how many people are mentees, so that you can start to measure your, your, your goals. So my funnel um, started out with about, um, over about it's about 2,000 names on the list, but I had to kind of segregate it and look at who are those people who are actually coaching and mentoring and, and, and that, and then who on the list um, wants to learn, wants to grow, wants to go on a trip, that kind of thing. So I had to, I had to segregate out the list to measure it. Um, and then, then you have to look at what's the overall reach. How many people in my community actually know that this is important, that we have to reach out to our fellow Jews and, and make this a priority? How many people in, our, in my community know that? And then the other segment of it is how many people in, in my funnel are actually donors and then identifying them. So it sounds like a lot of um, nitty gritty work, but it's important so that you can go back and you can track that your goals and your, your mission are coming together. So um, I liked really what you were saying before about doing events at other people's houses. We are doing that as well. And what's happening is the funnel is growing because those people were not on my email list, but because people are doing events in their homes, they're inviting their friends and so now the funnel is growing. With pe people are coming, I don't even know who they were. So I have to collect their. It sounds ridiculous, but you actually have to collect their name and address and phone number and and add it to the add it to the spreadsheet. So, um, and then also with Facebook, that's another way to build your funnel. So that's that's how, really really so critical. How did you get your second, your second people? Your second <coughs> Oh, how did I get the other group of people on my list? Oh, 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 okay. The, the top, so the top main programs were from the Holobake, and I'm, I know several of you run Holobakes in your community. Our Holobake is actually, we partnered with the, the JCC and the Federation, so um, the people on the list that were coaches were probably about 60 to 90 to 100 max of the, were coaches, and the rest of the people on the list are the ones the men and women who want to learn. So um, the list is quite large that way. So that's how we start out the list. And also just partnering with other organizations in the community and, and sharing lists that way. Didn't you send the newsletter to those people? Yeah, and so what we started doing just recently is we, we started a Project Inspire Arizona newsletter. It's a weekly email. It's very short. It doesn't have to be long. And it profiles um, different people in the community who are hosting events. It, it's profiled um, like there was a couple who did words and whiskey, so we profiled them. We profiled some people who were putting up mezuzahs, and and then we also list what events are coming up for the week. Great. So great. that's how we that's build our funnel. That's a great Can idea. Can we get a copy to see what you've done? We sure. Sure. That newsletter. We'll get that out. That's a very good idea. So one very innovative. Thank you, Robin. That was great.
one very innovative, you know, program. You know, we're trying to build community. Everybody's trying to build community. We have challenges to get the men involved. We have challenges, sometimes couples, to get them together on the same page. Um, and there, this learning is great. There's also this ruah thing, spirituality, you know, fun, music. So Bergen has a very uh, innovative um, program they do. I heard, I think Julie mentioned once every couple of months, a great program, really brings the community together in this way. So I want them to come up and introduce that because you might get a good idea, give you a community feel, injection of men and couples and a nice ruach. And Dina, I've got to tell you by the way, every, she hosts our men's programming, her and her husband, and, and, and it's been great in, uh, in Bergen. Um, okay. I'm sorry. And Hillary. This is Hillary. I'm Dina Levy. Um, so, I guess when I grew up, Friday nights to me were very special. Shot us a special Friday nights. The shul I grew up in was always a call bach minion. There was always singing and dancing. And when I moved to Teaneck, I said, what's going on? What's this 40 minutes Friday night? Like, what happened? And um, so we're trying to kind of, my husband and I are trying to find our spot, you know, in Teaneck and trying to create something like that. And um, when I became involved with um, Jewish Journeys, Jay Inspire, with the JWRP trip, it kind of gave us a, a home. And um, so what we started doing with these Friday night dinners, which I think are awesome, and I'll tell you a little bit about how we planned it, and Hillary can speak about it from, um, from being, uh, also coming to the dinner. Um, first of all, we start with candle lighting, so all the, everyone comes for candle lighting, we tell a story, we set the tone, we all light candles together, we probably sing one of the songs that we sing in the, you know, in the blessing together. Everything is transliterated so everyone can sing together and kind of put their arms around each other and you kind of, you know, have a feeling that Chavez is coming in. And then we have davening and we have, um, um, we have a Kabach minion. We have a fabulous, I'm sorry I didn't bring it today, but a fabulous, we bought um, transliterated Sidurim from um, Jane Spire. I'm sure you can buy them too. Um, but it has Mincha and Kabbalah Shabbat, which is Amara, which is not the Mincha, Kabbalah Shabbat, Amara, but which is what you say Friday night, so it's perfect. Transliterated, and everything you say is sung out loud together, so it's not like a bunch of mumbling, and everyone's into it. And we use the tunes, that's very important, the tunes that people might have known from Camp Ramah, from their childhood, from wherever. So everyone's on the same page, everyone sings together, we call out pages every two seconds. Um, we have singing, we have dancing. During the meal, it's important. We have name tags. We make seating so that we also have an, an issue where, you know, we've done, thank God, so many trips. So the 2013 group, let's say, doesn't know some a, a leader who's been on a 2018 trip. So we make sure that we kind of sit together so that everyone meets each other. And we're trying to create one group, the men come, also I always say the women come for spirituality, the men come for spirits, you know. <laughs> we have some good, good wine, um, and um, so the men come, the kids come, the kids, you know, not always come happily, but they sit at their own table, and they've made friendships, and it's really nice, like, you know, they're all in college, or they're all in high school, and they, there's a lot more that unite them, you know, than divide them, but that's also very nice. Um, um, we sing... Um, Shabbos songs together, everything's transliterated, we like to worry you cry to the Beach Boys because everyone here, we're all that age, knows the, the Beach Boys song. But it just, everyone's into it and everyone sings. Um, and then at the end, we all bring our chairs together, we have dessert, and we um, have either a rabbi come and speak, or we have questions on the table, to discuss, ethical questions to discuss, or we... Um, or we have something, let's say, called a tish, where you sit around the table and you tell People tell stories and sing songs. NCSY Venture, everything's transliterated. Nobody's clueless. Um, and benching out loud is very important. People get into it. People love it. And, um, you know, the preparation is a lot with the food and the name tags and the tables. Another thing we do is we ask the women to speak also. Like, let's say, introduce the kiddish or introduce, um, introduce something on the Parsha because they can learn with with a city leader, or they can go on h.com or chabad.org or wherever you know you go, and everyone, 
everyone feels equal. Everyone's together. It's one. It's one community. And um, and if, but we would love to do it monthly. The, our problem is that. It's a lot of work that's involved, but we try to do it every two, two months. And um, if, if any of you want, my husband and I, he does the, the Kabbalah Shabbat, but if you want us to come to, our, to your neighborhood for Shabbat and, and lead it, we would be happy to do it. And, and where do you do it? it? You do it in a shul? We do it in a shul, thank God we have a shul that... Yes, yes. Okay, I will give an outline about all the things that are important. And here's Hillary. Um, so, in terms of the spiritual prayer experience, I was I'm Jewish, two Jewish parents, but I am totally not learned. When I met my husband is where he was much more learned than I was. We're conservative Jews, if you want to give it a label. And so I started learning, but I'm still really behind the eight ball. And I went on the trip and I became very inspired. And I went in 2016 and convinced my husband to go in 2017. And I know a lot of the women, and one of their challenges, and I know this is one of the big challenges that um, Rabbi um, Barnett is saying, is that getting the men on board. And I think I have it easier for two reasons. One, my husband went on a trip. He goes to Dina's home regularly for the whiskey and wine, and he went... And wisdom. And wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, whiskey and wisdom. This is, if you, those in the room who know me, typical of me, so. good job with the whiskey. Whiskey, wine, oh yeah. yeah Rabbi Barnett does a great job with the wisdom. Yeah, the wisdom. Um, so, I have it easy getting, as a couple, coming on board. The kids, a little bit harder, but, we, we don't feel judged when we walk into this community of, of women and men. And I have to say, uh, again, and I'm, uh, when you spoke, I said, oh my goodness, that's, that could be my speech that you know, I was writing. If someone told me that I'd be sitting in a room two years after going to Israel with observant people, with their, from going Friday nights or Saturdays for Shabbos with from people, I'd be like, oh yes. Yeah. But, it's because they're so non-judgmental. They're welcoming. They teach us. Um, this, the Sidors that Dina spoke about, so helpful. Sometimes, I, I, because I've been going, I'm picking up on the prayer and the tune so I can say it, but sometimes I want to know what we're praying about. So I read the English, and it is so nice to hear people not... Speed dominating. There's intent. Sorry about that. There's um, intent in what they're doing, and you really feel. I feel Shabbat being um, brought in, and we have singing, we have dancing, and it's men and women. So it's not just the women together. Um, right, that really helps with the men wanting to be, to on be the, um, part of it. And oh, there is a machitza for David. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Can I just come on to Okay, fine. I'm louder than you anyway. We love you. Okay. We're going to go to our last uh, best practice uh, for now. Okay. We're going to do this. I'm sure you have a lot more advice, but last best, pra best practices, we know that people are compared in, in Judaism to trees. A person's like a tree. Why is a person like a tree? A tree, if you, if you say what it does, what its job is, from birth till death, it grows. That's its job. That's our job, really, like a tree. What do we call a tree? Eitz Chaim He. We call the Torah a tree of life. So we know that that Torah allows us, gives us that fuel, that wisdom to really, really grow. Many of the groups have, they love the social, and they love the whiskey, and the tahadas, the hitas, and the fatadas, and everything else. But they also love the wisdom. And they want to make sure that wisdom is in more and increasing levels to really help us grow, because that's what we're here for. So we want to turn our attention to a couple of learning programs or ideas some branches have had to get that a little more about, a little more of the emphasis. So I want to call up first um, Rockland ladies to come up and talk about um, what they do in terms of learning. Come, ready? Ready? OK. 
Okay, okay. Um, okay, we made a commitment when, um, after our last trip in 2016, that we would make learning central to our branch of J Inspire. We made a commitment that we would be consistent and we would have monthly wine and wisdom. So we've had the wine and we've had the wisdom and this is Lisa Weber. We've had it in her house and I will tell you that having a consistent place to have it every month is so wonderful because it takes the whole headache of where, when, how. So Lisa, please tell us about your house and what you do and Okay, so Baruch Hashem, I'm blessed with a beautiful home, and we've, since the very inception of my home 13 years ago, we've always enjoyed having groups, meaning, minyanim, all kinds of things in my home, and we've been Zoha now to host this on a monthly basis. Sometimes I have a fireplace going, we have girls literally going to every possible room in my home, and Rhonda can attest to that as, as well as others. First, we have a learning with Rabbi Label Lamb who is one of the most warmest, ingenuine pe purple that people that you can ever meet with. So I have a special base medrash where we learn in a beautiful sheer setting. We learn for about 20 minutes or so, and then we break off into groups. And sometimes the groups are the same each week or each month, and sometimes they're different. Women get to know one another, it's a religious gal with a not religious gal, or two religious gals together, it doesn't really matter. But the subject matter each month is based on the curriculum that you have provided for us. And it could be very esoteric, it could be more substantial. And oftentimes we just don't run out of, we run out of time before we run out of subject matter to discuss. And then we come back after the, uh, the, the, the uh, group, the, the two on two learning or the one on one learning. And we come back into the sheer session and Rabbi Lamb then wraps it up as if to say, and then we go our own ways. But there, I know that there are some other positive learning groups that go on during the weeks, and Betty can better to attest to that. Well, we just also have, for our groups that go, we have our own WhatsApp chat, and um, I usually write what time candle lighting is, and I try to give an inspiring message about the Parsha or about something which we just began. And we also have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So we encourage learning in every way, and um, it's open and very um, welcoming, so thank you. I like to call on Manhattan. Yeah. And not to come on up. Cheryl, your voice is a little better now. Cheryl's going to come. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. We're going to be quick because everybody said everything already. Um, but just in terms of the learning, we also, we've only been doing this for like four years, and we realized that. The women, like they just, they, they were dropping off, or if we have 20 women, maybe eight or 10 would come. And then we also had the epiphany also that, you know what, they can go out with their friends, they can go to paint night, they can go to this, but what they can't get with their friends is the learning. So this year we actually changed it up and we really went to a learning-based program and now we're getting like, almost all 20 of our women are coming tomorrow night for our two Bishvat thing. And we also, gave ourselves a name, like, but it wasn't Wine and Wisdom, we're just calling it J Inspire Monthly Mom Meetups. And in Manhattan, people really have these meetups, so it's, it gave us something official, and we're also making sure that we do a proper flyer and make it look kind of professional. Um, and we also often send it to the women in our community, the more religious women, um, because we really are creating community, and our big thing like JWRP, is unity without uniformity. And um, it, it's amazing to see. We also do one-on-one -on -one learning, and the one-on-one -on -one learning partners will often come. So we're, we're building community. But the other thing I want to say for good practices, just going a little rogue, is um, one of the best things that has happened to us is that we, every time along this road of, four, of our four years, we use our fellow city leaders. So we are on speed dial to Tova, from Queens, to Hana, to Dina. We kidnapped SD on the way back from the JWRP leadership conference and got everything from her. And um, along the way, as I'm sure I've spoken to other people too, but I just encourage everybody, especially you know new people and from Baltimore, wherever you're from, just 
hopefully everybody will have everybody's name. Just call people, ask us what we do, ask us what's worked, and I just want to thank all of you because hearing everything is going to make us better. Thank you for coming, Rosie. Um, but we're going to get all that information out to you. That's critically important. I just want to finalize and end this section of the program very quickly with Miriam Leibowitz coming up to tell us about a little innovative learning program that they do in the last minute or two that we have left. Hint, hint. No rogue. Thanks. No, you do. I actually just want to call up um, Lisa Black, my name is Susanna. Speak with me. Um, but just, um, I guess, touching on what Cheryl and um, what Idana said about like looking at your organization and the vision and the mandate, and just really looking at Jane Spire, we really try and infuse that idea in all of our programs about really creating Jewish unity and community. Um, and what we're what we've tried to do is um, really create a database in Toronto of um, partnering organizations that are able to help us. Um, you know, whether it's like speaking events. Um, different learning programs. Um, we created um, in a network in Toronto called Toronto Women in Cairo. About six months ago, we have about 80 um, women on the it's a WhatsApp chat right now. Um, all organizations, we have partners in Torah, we have three H branches, we have Orthomea, we have NCSY, um, and we have just a whole host of just different amazing speakers. So many times, it's a pretty active chat on a daily basis, but often I'm using that as a resource when we're doing events and we need speakers. You know, we had um, a request from a shul um, to find someone who could teach some of their women just basically, you know, how to read Hebrew. Posted on the chat, got 15 responses. So we're really using that also to engage the community um, and to utilize a lot of our own women um, to connect with us. Um, but one of the new programs that we've started um, is we have like a three-tier model following our JWRP trips where we have one-on-one um, -on -one learning. And I really learned a lot from Shlamis how to get that all on board. Um, which has been amazing. Um, we also have, of course, all the social and monthly, um, you know, follow-ups from our JWRP, um, and we've been able to partner with an organization um, that called the JFI in Toronto that does a ton of program planning, and they be, they were able to match all of their events with the, all the JWRP curriculum strands, and we're able just to kind of we need something on the Israel advocacy or Holocaust education to tap into that. So we're really trying to reach out into the community as a whole to help kind of make our, you know, our jobs a little easier, um, but to also unify all of us. Um, but one thing that we've recently done um, to kind of further the importance of Torah learning and to really encourage all of, all of the women you know, of different backgrounds to continue on their Jewish journey is to, um, we're running a, a series called Women in Tanakh. Um, and what it is, it's a, it's a, a partnership uh, learning program where we have a speaker and it's a 40 minute talk about women in Tanakh who are strong leaders that all of us can identify with. And we have invited, um, like I will reach out to my friends and other sort of mentees in the community and reach out to all of our past you know, participants in all of our trips. And it's a round table discussions, you know, it's, um, it's a 20 minute round table discussion followed by a talk where we're able to really apply what we learned in the talk and make it practical to all of us. So I just want to call Lisa for a minute just to talk about how the program impacted her. Hopefully yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It was actually quite interesting because I, I also do some learning with um, NCSY. My, my, one of my daughters is an NCSY program. And at the same time, um, all of the moms, instead of you know driving, dropping them off and going home or going grocery shopping, we actually hang around and we do learning as well. So so we, they're learning in their room, we're learning in our room, and we're talking to women, the, uh, the partial portion for each week. So from the women in Tor Tanakh um, class that we've done so far, we, did, we started off with Miriam. So we didn't start off with you know the the big names. We're we're getting into some of the some of the more impactful characters, but they're further down the further down the the, the chain of, of of the stories. So, but taking the, the 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 class that we talked about and some of the information I learned, I was able to apply that in another session. And say, hey, I just I just heard all about this amazing story and and uh, and share that uh, with with another group of uh, women too. So it, it didn't just impact on me and the learning strategy the way. It was set up. It was. It wasn't. Um, you weren't put on the spot because you weren't having to comment one on one. You were sitting in a small group. So there were six or eight of us being able to to relate the story um, and, and some of the themes from from that session of women in the Tanakh back to our own lives because we had women talking about you know having um, serious illnesses with children and sharing those those personal things and then able to take that and, and share that with another group of women. So it had a nice sort of touch out in the community further. 
Thank you. Okay, that's amazing, ladies. I just want to mention that we have uh, Mindy Ginsburg, our own city leader from Queens, has a really good Women in Tanakh series that I thought was so good and so important. That we're going to try to offer that at a monthly basis on a Zoom call. So now we're at lunch, ladies. Okay, so now we're, before we get to that, I just want to give you two announcements. First announcement is, we wanted to split you up before to make you meet everybody, but now you can sit wherever you like. So it might be nice for the ladies from the groups to get back together again, so you can maximize your time as a group, you know? So we have that time now, now that we're um, breaking for lunch. Now I just want to tell you, we have a hard stop, ladies. Listen to this for a second. At 1.40, at uh, 12.45, sorry. Right. Okay, no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just rodeo you guys up a little bit later. We have a hard stop the session after the Berkowitz. So lunch will be served, ladies, we have 45 minutes. 145, we're going to group back up, 145, for the breakout session first of the afternoon.